Um, yeah, my name is Ed Kaloje. I'm here in the Science and Mathematics group. Um, and today I'll talk about uh, organic contaminants in surface waters of the Puget Sound region. Really what I do is look at water quality um, here in Puget Sound, especially focusing on compounds with adverse effects for aquatic ecosystems. Um, I went to Hopkins, then Berkeley, Berkeley. Um, I had a faculty job at University of Nevada, Reno for seven years, and then I came to UW in 2014 as part of the freshwater sciences hire, um, where I work across both campuses. Um, okay, so what I really do is I use uh, expensive instruments to fish for chemicals in water. Uh, I'm using half million dollar instruments to see what chemicals in water and which ones are bad for fish. And um, yeah, pretty much surface waters, and we, we do both surface water and di different tissues. So I use a technique called high-resolution mass spectrometry. It's basically like throwing a giant net into the water where we get thousands of chemicals at a single time, and all the effort comes in trying to figure out what chemicals are there. It's an open-ended search. Um, we, we have no expectations of what we'll find before we start. As an example, if I, I look at a sample of municipal wastewater, if I extract two liters of it, I see 11,600 chemicals in that one sample. Um, we don't know what they are, but we work on finding out um, their identity. So we can do both water and tissue extractions with this method. All the effort is in data analysis. These are giant data sets, and we put a lot of time and effort into that identity, which is basically screening against different databases to tell you what your instrument saw. I'm most interested in this problem of pre-spawn mortality in coho salmon. When salmon return to urban creeks in the Seattle area to spawn in the fall, if it rains, they die, and we don't know why yet. So a lot of my work is to explore that problem. I work with Jen McIntyre. She's at Washington State University, Puyallup. She takes highway runoff, exposes fish to it. There's actually fish inside that tank in the middle in those tubes, and um, they die. And she does ecotoxicology work to figure out the mechanism of toxicity. We also work with citizen scientists. So there's a whole bunch of people who go out into urban creeks every day. If they see a fish die, they call us up. We come and get it. We collect the water there. And that's one of the ways that um, our samples are generated. We compare the chemicals we detect in the surface water and the highway runoff. We look for chemicals that we're detecting in the highway runoff. And we're watching those chemicals move from the stormwater into the fish. And that's helping us prioritize which chemicals we should focus the most on. As an example, in stormwaters, we see pesticides like promaton and ethoprophos. We see things like caffeine and cotinine. Uh, we see resins from automobile plastics, and we see drugs that people use. So that's all in highway runoff. When we compare highway runoff to urban creeks, um, highway runoff is about twice as complex as the water we see in urban creeks. Um, so we know salmon are dying in urban creeks, but in highway runoff, there's a lot more compounds that are basically unidentified. We don't know what they are. So on top here, we have samples of highway runoff, and you'll see inside the red box, those are chemicals that are common to not only the highway runoff, but they're also inside coho salmon that died after exposure to that water. So there's a subset of chemicals that start in the water and go into the fish. When we look at what chemicals those are, they're things like acete analyde, this dicyclohexaurea and guanidine. Those are compounds that are actually associated with like tires. Um, so they're actually compounds that are leaching out of the tires in your car and they go into fish. We pay the most attention to this acete analyde because it's a really interesting compound for us because it's actually a metabolic poison. It causes uh, a condition called cellular hypoxia, which basically means that your cells can't use the oxygen that you breathe in. Um, so it's a very plausible toxicant that might explain the pre-spawn mortality in salmon. That's a hypothesis we're still testing. Um, this is just a comparison with standards. Our detection looks exactly like the standard in stormwater, gill, and liver. When we look at this more broadly, we have essentially a couple dozen compounds that we've detected not only in stormwater runoff, but inside the fish that have died from that exposure. So now we go from thousands of detections to a small set that we can really focus on to understand whether or not they're toxic. Um, to summarize this research, there's a lot of chemicals out there we know nothing about. We have no idea if they're toxic or not. Um, using this high-resolution mass spectrometry technique, we've identified some uh, small subset of compounds for intensive screening, and I think that's what we're most excited about. I would definitely like to thank uh, my research group, collaborators and colleagues, and funding agencies. They're, they're all over the place, really. Um, yeah, 
And that's it. I do most of the work at the Center for Urban Waters, which is on the other side of Thea Foss, and that's where all our labs are.